Not long ago, somebody asked me a question which really upset me. They were talking about how tired they were and about the fact that they really needed a day off of work. And then suddenly they turned to me and they asked me, isn't it nice to wake up in the morning and have nothing to do? On that day, just like every day, I had been awake since 5.30 in the morning. I had a stiff neck because as soon as my son cr starts crying, I usually jump out of bed to run downstairs to make his bottle as quickly as possible because I don't want him to wake up my toddler. Do you know what I miss the most about my life before having children? It's not being able to go out whenever I want or have the freedom to spend as much time with my friends as I want or going to the movies or traveling anywhere I want. No, what I miss the most is having nothing left on my to-do list. Because there were many times, several times a week even, when everything was done. The laundry was folded, the house was tidy, the dishes were clean, dinner was ready, and all I had to do was sit on the sofa, relax, and watch an episode of Stranger Things. But now that I have children, my list of things to do is never done. And people don't get it because people feel like these are all very small things that should only take a minute, like, you know, emptying the dishwasher or clearing the table after dinner. Yeah, but there are more things to do on my list than there are minutes on the day. So my pile of things to do is all the way up here. And when I finally go to sleep in the evening, on my knees, exhausted, I've only gone through half of the things I needed to do. And then when I wake up in the morning, it's all the way back up here again. Because by the time I cross some items of the list, some of the things I had already done come back on. I think what really hurt me about that question um, was that I suddenly felt like everything I do all day, every day with my children was suddenly reduced to nothing, as if it was completely unimportant, as if it had no value and I deserve no recognition or gratitude for all that work that I do all day, every day, as if it required zero effort as if it didn't create any fatigue, whether it's physical or mental. So now I'm going to get back to my pile of laundry and ask a very important question. How do we, as a society, value caregiving? How do we value all of this informal, unpaid care work that we do every day to care for young children, but also to care for disabled people, ill people, and the elderly? and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here welcome my name is Soraya I'm a mother of two and here on this channel I speak my truth about motherhood in last week's episode of the laundry talk we spoke about the work environment that we know uh, today in western societies and whether it's compatible with parenthood and, be and with being as present as you would like with your very young children and I also suggested some changes in the way that we view the world of work um, that we could make in order to make it easier for parents to judge their family life with their professional life and I'm sorry if you can see my toddler she's sitting right here next to me she just really wanted to sit with me so you might hear her in the background and also the clips in this video might be a bit all over the place because I've had to film it in more than one time because you know mom life <laughs> in today's episode of the laundry talk I want to talk about a very big question which is very much linked to every single small topic that we have spoken about before in this channel and by the way all of the videos I have made before in this series will be linked in the description box below so you could go and have a look but all of these small questions that we have tackled are very much linked to this bigger issue which is how do we as a society value informal caregiving so that when we care for our very young children or when we care for somebody who is ill or somebody who is disabled or when we care for an older parent many of us in our lives will be thrown into this caregiver work um, in a way that is informal and of course unpaid and before I continue I just want to specify that number one of course unpaid care work includes caring for like I said children disabled people the elderly sick people but in this video I'm going to specifically focus on parenthood and caring for young children because this is the topic that 
I know about most, um, but a lot of the things I'd say will also apply for other categories of care. In a previous Laundry Talk video, I spoke about all of the unfair, condescending comments that stay-at-home moms get all the time, things like, what do you do all day? And I even confessed that I used to think that way too, until I had children and I realized that I wasn't ready to hand them over to a nursery full-time, I wasn't ready to delegate their care and go back to full-time employment. And so I realized at that point that actually I could find happiness and fulfillment in my role as mother and that I can find it satisfying to stay at home and care for my children. But I still find it very difficult and hurtful that I feel like mainstream society doesn't value the work that I do as a mother at all. For example, I always feel like my physical and mental exhaustion, for some reason, is less recognized than the exhaustion that someone who goes to work can experience, who physically goes to a workplace. It's like, you know, we always talk about you know, people's burnout, but no one talks about stay-at-home mom's burnout and about all of the fatigue and exhaustion that we can experience when we spend the whole day caring for very young, very dependent children. Once upon a time, in a world before COVID-19, my children used to go to nursery three days a week, and that's when I would get to do my work. I was working from home, and sometimes I had to go in the office for team meetings. But even though I was busy and I was actually working, I felt like this was my time off. Are there any working moms watching? Do, can you relate? Do you feel like when you go to work, it's actually your time off? And don't get me wrong, I love spending time with my children and I spend four full days a week with them. But while they're at nursery and I'm doing my work, despite the fact that I'm actually busy working, it's my time off from thinking about this huge pile of things to do. It's my time off from the constant noise. It's my time off from somebody constantly being so dependent on me and needing me at every second. Becoming a mother and caring for young children has such a massive impact on women's lives. It takes up so much of their time and energy, yet there's no real recognition for it. It's completely hidden from public view and public accounts of productivity. So that leads me to the question, how do we as a society value unpaid care work? So now let's think about how can we value unpaid care work like caring for our children? Well, we can start by thinking about it in terms of monetary value. And here there are two ways that we can calculate the monetary value of this unpaid care work. The first way to calculate it is by calculating what we call the replacement cost. Replacement cost is the cost that we would pay if we were to basically outsource the care work that we currently do ourselves for free. So that means we would get, you know, childcare services, we would pay for cleaning services, we would pay for a chef to come and cook family dinners for us. So all of the things that we do at home for free are actually things that other people do for money and get paid for. And I don't know if you've seen that article written by this dad about the replacement cost, what it would cost him if he paid for professionals to do all of the work that his wife, who stays at home to care for his children, do every day. And he f came to the conclusion that it would, co it would cost him over $73,000 a year to pay for somebody to do all the work that she does at home for free. And what about time? Time is money, right? Think about all the hours that we spend caring for others, you know, and doing domestic work. All these hours are hours that we could instead be spending doing paid work. And that's what's called the opportunity cost. And that's the second way to calculate the monetary value of this unpaid care work that we do every day. That's the labor market earnings that we are losing out on by basically doing the laundry and caring for our children instead of doing paid work. And ladies, let me know in the comments below how many hours a day do you spend doing house chores and caring for your children? And let me know if you multiply that number by your current or your last job's hourly rate, how much money would that be? That's how much you would earn if you were paid for all the extra work that you do at home for free. So now that we have spoken a little bit about monetary value, let's talk about how as a society we clearly obviously have an interest in making sure that our children receive the best possible care when they are young. And that's because children are tomorrow's citizens, tomorrow's workforce, tomorrow's decision makers, aren't they? So we clearly 
have an interest in making sure that they grow to be healthy, balanced adults. And so the quality of childcare is very important. There hasn't really been enough research conducted on the effects of different childcare options on the development of children, which just goes to show how, you know, we haven't even cared enough that we have financed, you know, academic work on that topic. But anyway, so there really hasn't been much research done on the topic. But what we do know is that infants benefit from staying with their mothers longer. Number one, because they benefit from breastfeeding during at least the first six months of life. And as we know, when the mother returns to work, especially if she returns to work full time, that becomes very difficult. And in many cases, the mother will have to give up on breastfeeding or she will just stop producing milk. So that is put at threat by going back to work. And we also know that infants benefit from staying with their mother for the first couple of months because long separations from the mother at a young age may cause attachment issue. And I will link all of the research in the description box below so you could go and have a look if you're interested. Um, but that's about all that we know. We don't know much more than that. We don't know how long it is rec it, sh it, it should be recommended that the child stays with the mom. Um, we know that continuity of care is important, but it could also be continuity of, of care, you know, with a nanny or in the same nursery. So we don't know that much. But what we do know is that definitely the quality of care matters. And so if it matters, how come as a society we don't value more caring for children and all of this informal, unpaid, caregiving work that mothers do on a daily basis? If we as a society are able to recognize how important it is to care for human life, basically, um, and if we are able to recognize how much it represents in terms of work, but also in terms of value, then it will be, of course, more encouraging for employers to take measures to make it easier for people to juggle their work and their personal life. It will be uh, an even bigger motivation for fathers to step in and contribute and do more in the household uh, because they will see how how important this work is. It will mean more recognition for all of these women who choose to stay at home and basically dedicate their lives to caring for others and more recognition to um, all of the women and men who work but also spend so many hours of their day at home doing all of this informal unpaid care work. That's it for today's video. I hope that you have found it inspiring and interesting. And if you did, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell so you never miss one of my videos. And I hope that you have a truly wonderful day.